listening to the Post-Apocalyptic Media Podcast, your weekly post-apocalyptic news roundup. Welcome to the Post-Apocalyptic Media Podcast. My name is Derek. I am joined with Sean. Hey, everyone. In that corner right there. And then uh, Stephanie in the bottom corner over here. Hello. We are excited to come to you today because we have a lot of announcements going on. April is going to be a big month, has already been a big month uh, for the post-apocalyptic genre, and we are going to talk all about it. We've got a uh, TV and game-heavy show today, but there's also some some alien news and, um, and some movie news. So we're going to get right into that. At the end of the show, we will be talking about Fear the Walking Dead. Holy crap, what is that in their background, Sean? <laughs> oh, oh my gosh. It's uh it's from Horizon Zero Dawn. I'm I'm in the game right now. Oh, well be careful. Wow. Yeah, I'm hiding from that thing. <laughs> uh well that all right. That is amazing. <laughs> that is that is the power of modern cinema right there. So um <laughs> Sean, be careful with that. Speaking of Horizon Zero Dawn, let's go ahead and get that out of the way right at the top of the show. It's free right now. If you have a PlayStation, which is the only people I think that even uh, are allowed to play this, maybe there's a PC port that I don't know about, but uh, yeah, it's a, it's a PlayStation game, and if you have a mm-hmm. PlayStation, go ahead and log into your old PlayStation dashboard. I don't know what y'all do. I don't have a PlayStation, but uh, <laughs> go get it. Because it's free right now, and uh, you, you don't want to pass that up. And if, if it functions anything like previous free things in the past, it's probably uh, one of those things where you have to claim it like during this period. I think like there's a couple-week period mm-hmm. where you can get it. And if you do it yeah. in the t- that time, you don't even have to play it. You own it now, and you can go to it any time. Yeah, it's still May 14th. Okay. Okay, so that's when it expires, May 14th. Um, all right, so we got that out of the way. Uh, let's see, Blackout. Y'all, y'all ever heard of a podcast called Blackout? Mm-mm. Well, Stephanie has because she brought yes. it to my attention. Because so, uh, I, I brought it to your attention. Tell me, tell me about Black. Tell, tell all of us, if we don't know what Blackout is, what is it? Um, well, it's something that sounds really exciting. Apparently, the first season already released in 2019. It's about, I'll have to pull up the exact description because I don't have it on me right now, but it's um, starring Rami Malik from Mr. Robot. He is amazing. And it's, a, and sorry if I mispronounced his name. Anyone who follows this knows I'm bad about that. But anyway, um, it's really, it sounds really interesting. It's about a electricity going out across the country or perhaps even the world. You know what? I'm going to f- pull up the description so I yeah, can read we don't, it. And we don't want to hear get... your guess at what the plot is about. <laughs> um, I know. Nobody wants to hear my guess. <laughs> by the way, Rami Malik also in The Pacific, yeah. which is um, kind of a sequel to Band of Brothers, although it's not really a connected story. Um, what Great else? Show. Is, you like the Pacific? How what do you? <laughs> yeah. How do you think it compares to Band of Brothers? Uh, well, it's just updated, but I don't think anything can replace Band of Brothers. That's such a epic show. I completely agree. Yeah, yeah, it's it. I I had my expectations set at Band of Brothers, and that was a mistake. But it's yeah. a great series, The Pacific, and they're coming out with a third one, eventually. I think. Did Apple pick it up? Oh, really? Somebody. Yes, Apple did. Okay. Apple picked it up, and they are coming out with a third one at some point. I don't know the timeline, though. Cool. Okay, I have the official description for you. Yeah, bring it. A small-town New Hampshire radio DJ who fights to protect his family and community after the power grid goes down nationwide, upending modern civilization. A reluctant hero must navigate this new world, while providing safety for his family and hope for the future. Sounds really good. I mean, this this one 
apparent the first season's already out. It was eight episodes. Each one was about twenty three minutes in length to twenty five. So four hours, and you'll be caught up. They're releasing season two this summer, so I'm I'm going to be listening. I haven't heard this one yet. I just discovered it the other day, so I'm going to be catching up before the new season releases. To me, it sounds super intriguing, partially because of what Austin just went through in February. When, and I say Austin, it was all of Texas, right? Like, we didn't lose the entire power grid, although we were apparently very close to doing so, I've been told. I've been told we were just like minutes away from the entire power grid in Texas going down for months. But even though we didn't lose the entire power grid, it was cut down in a lot of places to just essential circuits. And a lot of people were without power for days when it was temperatures were dipping to like one degree and Texas is not prepared for that and roads were not really um, passable. They were very hard to drive in a lot of areas. So... We've talked about it on here before, how we were basically thrust into an apocalypse, post-apocalyptic world for a few days. Yeah. So yeah. I'm really interested in hearing this podcast story based on the entire country right. being, and going through this. For a little bit of context, since I know we got international listeners, people who are not in Texas, yeah. um, you might be imagining like a really extreme weather event. Uh, something that is unprecedented and unheard of. Uh, that's not exactly what happened. Uh, the weather that Texas experienced actually happens all over the world uh, fairly yeah. often. It's that we weren't prepared for it here in this local uh, area. And so, um, you know, a lot of people really, they, they like to disregard preppers and, uh, you know, apocalyptic kind of warnings because they think they just assume we have such a smart society. We're so advanced in every way. Like there's just no way uh, that we could have these kinds of failures. And that's just uh, the Texas was a case in point that we can yeah. have those failures, that we are not maybe as smart as we assume ourselves to be. And um, on top of that, uh, you know, I first of all, I want to say uh, the government should not be trusted. So um, take this with a <laughs> grain of salt especially people who uh, kind of have a consistent voice of uh, alarmism in the government. However, I believe it was Dick Cheney who had said that um, three nukes is all it would take uh, blown up. Basically, you know, when it comes to nuclear bombs, generally you want to blow them up uh, kind of close to the ground because then that shoots up a lot of dust that gets radiated and it blows everywhere. If you want to do the most damage, you're doing it close to the ground. However, if you want to do the most EMP type of damage, then you explode it way high in the air. And that's, um, according to this report, this government thing, three nukes is all it would take to blast away, uh, basically destroy most of the electronics in America, put us about 10 years uh, of blackouts all over America before we could repair it. And uh, we're just not... We're not a society that's that's well prepared to survive without constant access to electricity. Yep. So, I mean, um, yeah. go ahead. Oh, I was just going to say, like, here in Texas, you know, the roads were too icy to drive on for some period of time. And what I forgot to mention before is a lot of people also lost water <laughs> at the same time because um, the pipes were bursting and there were just a lot of issues with that going on and they couldn't be fixed. So there are people without power and without water. And so they were really just thrust into apocalyptic world. They were gathering snow outside and melting it over open fires just to have water to drink. So it's crazy, like Derek said, to know, you know, we really are that close. Like an EMP could do it or just unexpected weather event. So <laughs> it's, it's good to just be prepared. Yeah, somewhat expected weather event. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that wasn't even like we knew. We knew it was going to happen, but a few days in advance. But that wasn't enough time, apparently. Sean, are you anyway, uh, are you off the grid? Are you are you able to make your own electricity? Well, I have uh, I have six acres and I have a couple buildings nice. that are not on the grid. Uh, nice. Our main house is, but 
you know, we, we have one building that's, and I say building, it's a tiny little building, but it, you know, that's completely uh, solar. Mm -hmm. And then I've talked about my, um, my post-apocalyptic cabin before, and that doesn't have any power. Well, it does have power from the, from the house, but it, other than that, it doesn't have any power. Um, and it's kind of made not to, you know, it has a wood burning stove and all that kind of mm -hmm. stuff. So I'm ready. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, that sounds like you're you're not ready if you are on the grid. So let me well, just well, say he's on the grid, but also I like the idea of being like sorry, Derek, but I like <laughs> the idea of being having a house that's on the grid, but then yeah. you're on a big property and you have like this secondary house plus a bunker. Of course, let's let's be real. We all want bunkers, <laughs> yeah. but also the secondary house in the back of the property somewhere hidden that's totally off the grid. Yeah, and the other one has well water, and the house has city water. So, ooh, it's, see, it's that's my ideal. Yeah. Let's have both. You need yeah. the fake house, the house where you know <laughs> they go to to steal your stuff, at you know, in, yeah. in an apocalypse, and then you have your real stash. Um, you know, and and something that my cousin taught me, my cousin David, um, was telling me that he's making a mental note of these uh, solar panels that are out like public infrastructure solar panels they have them on street lights and stuff and so he's just he has a mental catalog so that if the shit hits the fan he knows where he can go scavenge some solar panels and nobody's gonna like shoot them for you know taking their their stuff and so i i know that right down the road there's an elementary school with a huge field of solar panels so um which uh, gives us a shelter for people but okay <laughs> Take it from those kids. <laughs> poor, poor children. <laughs> They're like, my learn. school, I was planning on going here. Even after the world fell apart. No, I can't. Yeah, yeah. If your elementary school is your uh, survival bunker, I don't think you're going to be long for this world. So, <laughs> Aww. Well, <laughs> hopefully it doesn't come to that. Uh, I also have a next door neighbor with solar panels. So um, maybe we could barter for trade or something uh yeah i'm 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 ready to get our own solar panel someday <sighs> yeah. yeah it pays for itself in like 15 years or so uh you'll have saved enough money on your electricity bills that um you'll have paid off the all the equipment and then you have i think like five more years uh left on the lifespan of your solar panels in which you'll be cash positive compared to just buying it from the electricity company so this may be complete rumor, but aren't there some cities with really weird rules about solar panels? Like you can't have them off the grid or something weird. Yeah, Sean, yeah. you're nodding like you know more. Yeah, about there this than there me. are some. I mean, there's there's weird government laws against uh, water collection. <sighs> you know, harvesting what? your own energy, all this stuff. It's like oh why gosh. I don't understand why they're so worried about that. But yeah, that's ridiculous. Yeah, <sighs> yeah, that's. Um, well, let's uh, we'll we'll keep Derek says something controversial uh, <laughs> for for another part of the show. But also <laughs> on that note, happy 420, everybody. Happy 420. <laughs> I mean, you're not going to be hearing this. I mean, if you're listening live, it's 420. If you're listening later for our official podcast, it's not. But you know what? Happy 420. Hmm. Yeah, it's They're 420 is in the heart. It's like they were trying you know to get Dogecoin up to 42 cents today. I don't think it made it, though. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my gosh, that was a great idea. Apparently also in New York today, there is a uh, marijuana advocacy group that is offering free joints to anyone in Union Square who has been fully vaccinated. So if you're listening right now live and you're in New York and you're vaccinated, go get your free joint. Hey, if, you, if you're listening right now and you are going to take them up on that, we'll patch you into this podcast right now <laughs> so just right. get on your phone you know let us know in the chat and we'll send you an invite to join us and and we want to see it live yeah that'd um, be great i do want to see that live <laughs> <clears throat> all right so that's okay so back to the topic at hand blackout it's a podcast they've yes. already done their first season it's a post-apocalyptic podcast with a super famous guy rami malik at the lead and not only that but they're doing a season two podcast mm -hmm. and they're doing a season one TV adaptation. 
Yes, they're working on it. I don't know too many details, but they're working on a TV adaptation. Um, I think it's being overseen by the same production company that did Planet of the Apes and Greatest Showman. So, you know. Okay. I didn't recognize the name of the company, though, so I don't know if they're the production company or some something else, but somehow they're they're connected, and I'm excited. <laughs> All right, um, cool. Well, uh, we'll move on from that. Do do you know um, who Markiplier is? Markiplier? No. Well, neither do I. However, uh, the, he apparently has like 16 million. YouTube, 28 million 28 million youtube subscribers yes it's a big deal apparently and, uh so this fella he is um he did a like a what was he did that he did <laughs> what was he that he did what Stephanie? was he that he did well um i am going to have to pull this up too because i i don't have the the name of it so give me one second val's yelling at us in the chat right now about oh, how we should me. know this person <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> this is why we need you, Val. You. Okay, yeah, I wish Val were here right now. We want her in this podcast as much as possible. By the way, Val, there you go. It's live. <laughs> Please join us as much as you can. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I just don't follow YouTube personalities. That's like, I follow so many things for my job, and there's just too much. There's too much out there, so I just can't follow YouTube, unfortunately. But so Val he's, does. He's so making a Val. thing called the Edge of Sleep. Oh, and thank that you for looking that up. That doesn't sound that interesting to me on the on the front end. The Edge of Sleep. That doesn't even sound like a post apocalyptic thing. However, once it <laughs> I'm was I'm always explained on the Edge of Sleep. Me, yes, <laughs> Sorry, that's <laughs> this is the, that's the uh, biography title for Sean's life. Yep. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yes. But uh, but the edge of sleep is a uh, series about essentially people around the world. One night they go to sleep and and they die, and the only survivors are those who didn't go to sleep that night. And so they're like, I guess pounding uh, monster energy or whatever, and just like trying to figure out what kills you when you go to sleep. Uh, before they uh, succumb to to sleep themselves. Yeah, this sounds really interesting to me. It's a very unique idea. Yeah. Apparently, he is in Canada now, quarantining, and they're going to start filming and could release start releasing episodes as early as May. And so, okay, so I think the story started out like on his YouTube channel. He kind of did oh, the beginnings right. of it. On a and podcast or something, yeah. On a po okay, yeah. So it was, it, he kind of did a first run of it, and now they're going to remake it in big, beautiful uh, cinematic production, I suppose. So uh, I'm actually looking forward to that. That sounds like a good plot to me. Yeah. Mm hmm. Me too. Uh, okay, so that's that. Uh, what about Creamery? Ring any bells? Creamery? Cold Stone Creamery? <laughs> But right. That's all it, <laughs> that would be my my initial thought. Cold Stone Creamery, Bluebell Creamery. I mean, mm. just ice cream. Yum. Yeah. Mm -mm -mm. It is. Yes, creamery, I am pro creamery. Is a TV show, a post apocalyptic TV show in New Zealand. And I believe they're in their first season. So Stephanie brought this to my attention, and I read uh, a little bit of the headline, and <laughs> uh, just announced it on the show. So if you have watched Creamery. Come tell us about it because we yeah. don't know Jack shit about New Zealand TV shows right now. We're no. we're in our bubble and uh, we don't want to just be stuck in this bubble. We have an I Australian uh, felt friend of the show that maybe we should be consulting about. Oh, this. that's such a great idea. We should ask him. Yeah. All right. Um, okay. So in in things we know a little bit more about, Quiet Place <laughs> coming out April twenty third. That's probably the same day that uh, most people will be listening to this. Yeah, Friday. Oh, oh, that's exciting! Is it? Where is it? Where is it coming out, Derek? Do you know this? No. I'm gonna Google it right now. This is a live podcast of <laughs> Stephanie googling things. <laughs> yes. 
Uh, Ash Walkers is out now, so if you want to play that, go ahead and, and give that a spin. Uh, Mortal Kombat oh. not out now, even though I told you it would be. Derek, fake news. What happened? Um, a Quiet Place 2, I guess it hasn't been updated on our calendar yet. It's actually not, it was pushed back. It's not coming out until May 28th. <laughs> <laughs> Look on his face. That pandemic. <laughs> if you're listening on the podcast through the podcast, you missed the greatest expression on Derek's face <laughs> right then. <laughs> I just I feel like I'm just failing over and over with these uh, you're not. dates right now. <laughs> you're not. It's just um, this one. This one I <laughs> we need to update on our calendar. Sorry if anybody looked at our calendar and got super excited about Quiet Place Two. Yeah, you're well, gonna have you're another not alone. month to wait. I looked yeah. at our calendar and I was super excited about Mortal Kombat. So I sat down at my TV fully ready to see Scorpion rip somebody's spine out. And uh, it's not even out yet. When is it coming out? Like a couple days. Oh. Hmm. We, we were a week off. Ah. Uh, so, so that's happening. Handmaid's Tale. Is that still the 28th? Please yes. tell me that that's accurate. Okay, good. Good. <laughs> so far. So far, it's accurate. <laughs> Uh, so okay, so those are those are some of the major announcements uh, that we've got. There was um, I don't know if anybody played uh, who's listening played Dying Light, but they just announced a Rust crossover. Dying Light's post-apocalyptic. I'm just not familiar hmm. with it, uh, except for I did watch the Dying Light two demo footage like two years ago. It feels and got really excited about it, and it's still in production. So mm. don't know when that's going to be coming out, but it's an RPG. Looks really good. Um, the day before an RPG looks really good. Don't know when that's coming out. So just just get you excited about the future of post-apocalyptic gaming. If you're not already excited, there's a ton going on right now. Speaking of post-apocalyptic gaming, Sean, Wasteland 3 is not through. No, they have a new DLC uh, called Steel Town, um, and it, Battle of Steel Town is the full name. And basically, what it is is it's uh, an introduction to a new part of Colorado called Steel Town, hmm. where uh, I guess I don't know how much we want to get into the story, but you know the patriarch tells basically in in the trailer they show this. The patriarch tells you, "Hey, go fix Steel Town. There's it's this manufacturing town." that makes weapons and, and uh, armor and, and vehicles and stuff like that. And it provides the Patriarch with all this stuff. Well, it's broken. Something happened there. Something something is stopping production. So he's like, go there and figure out what's going on and fix it. And that's your mission. So it's, it's like a DLC. It's not like a sequel or anything hmm. like that. You know, it's just an add-on uh, for, the, for the original game. Wasteland 3. Cool. Cool. Wasteland 3, by the way, is, um, is kind of neat because at the end of the game, they sing you a song. It's like a bard like created a song to talk about your adventure. And uh, the song changes drastically based upon the decisions you made in the game. So just a, just a little um, tidbit there from somebody who, who played through the game is that you get that reward at the end where they're like, he didn't kill the bizarre guy and now everybody's <laughs> sad or something. I don't remember the... So, uh, okay, so that's that's going on with Wasteland 3. Uh, do we got to pay for it? Uh, yeah, it's 14 bucks. Okay. Um, but it's available... Well, it's available for PC, PS4, and for Xbox. But um, they... From the source where I found this, it said that there's a likely 10% discount for Game Pass holders for Xbox. So... Yeah, yeah. That'll be good. Good. Get Game Pass, y'all. Yeah. Um, okay, so let's go to alien footage. There's new alien footage, correct? Bum, bum, bum. Yes. It's a triangle um, floating through the air. So the the crazy thing about this, there's alien footage all the time, you know, and, and some of Which it is... Which is crazy by itself. But. Yeah, yeah, it is. Some of it is amazing stuff. You know, there's... A lot of it is filmed by the military, especially the Navy. And there have been a few where the Navy has tracked, you know, there's one where they tracked this 
thing flying through the air and so you can see the speed of it and it's just this insane speed and it's flying right over the water um well this one the the pentagon said yes that is actually something that was filmed by the navy like they confirmed you know so that we don't have to worry about being a fake or anything like that it's it's actually confirmed now they haven't confirmed that it's an alien ship of course uh you know they save that for later right so we'll find out about that you know a long time from now but uh, I, I think it's interesting that they're confirming like they they never would have done this years ago, you know, confirming right. that this is something that's unidentified, that they don't know what it is, uh, because usually it's just like a weather balloon, quote unquote. Right. So this is crazy stuff. I don't know. We're, it's like we're getting closer and closer to finding out more about this kind of stuff. Really does feel that way. Feels yeah. like there's going to be some kind of admission or something in the near future and this is just kind of preparing us for it which yeah. is exciting i want to know right away <laughs> aliens are real yeah what's what's interesting too is that a lot of these um videos that come out they don't show a consistency of vessels it's like this new video is like this glowing triangle hmm. maybe pyramid i've heard it described as a pyramid all i see is the bright triangle when i watch that footage yeah. um but uh but maybe it's a pyramid and uh then i saw you know there was that one that was really weird looking it looked like a pokemon badge and it was like it was triangular but with a little triangle at the bottom and uh, it was like a five points or something i can't interesting but uh, yeah, that looked really weird. And um, and then, of course, you have uh, the kind of the cigar shaped. I hear a lot about the cigar shaped being spotted a lot. So anyways, it's just interesting that like you would think that if you were going to build interstellar travel uh, devices, that they would have to all fit the same mold just because of the physics behind that. But um, but maybe we're just that far behind in the tech or maybe um you know i think it's possible that this isn't aliens but this is other human beings who um who possess technology that's so far beyond us but if that's the case where are they you know where are they are they wakandia style like there but hiding themselves because they're so far ahead and they don't want to get involved with the rest of us um there's you know, I think they're from the future. Oh, Maybe. right. The future people hypothesis. Yes. I, one are of my many hypotheses. I think the Wakanda hypothesis is good, too. But, are the future um, people immigrating here, or are they just, like, sightseeing? I mean, I know there's a lot of sci-fi shows that talk about future people coming back and Im immigrating here to avoid climate change destruction and such. And, and that's certainly a possibility <laughs> i say as but it's why not right but um i don't know i personally think that they're just kind of sightseeing and coming back to view historical events and such which is why you know there were a lot of sightings during different periods of time when we were building nukes and such and now maybe more sightings because of you know this the pandemic and all these other things going on. So I think it's just mostly sightseeing. Hmm. We're like Disneyland to them, right? <laughs> like oh, the yeah, zoo. or a zoo <laughs> yeah. or like a historical museum. Yeah, we're like Westworld. Hmm. Yeah. You know, know, yeah, see what, why not? See what they lived like back when... And they're trying not to do anything because, you know, we're the past. They're, they're, maybe they can't interfere or they're not supposed to, you know, sort of a time prime directive which star trek has talked about before but anyway <laughs> well i want to take this moment <laughs> to uh to remind you all that we have a discord server we talk about uh all sorts of news you know we don't cover a lot of stuff on this show we don't cover uh, a whole lot of like post-apocalyptic um the the prepping aspect of cooking True. and equipment Although we, could. Uh, although we we could and we may in the future but um you know if you want to jump into those discussions we have people from all walks of life in our discord some people mm -hmm. who are very far along in the yeah. prepping category who would love 
to um, to give you advice, mm-hmm. to evaluate your setup, um, to compare notes. We um, we have a games channel where you know we're not we're, where something comes up that it's not like newsworthy enough to put in the podcast. Like fifty percent off a really popular game, it gets posted in there. Mm-hmm. Um, so we've got. Uh, a lot of reasons to be in that pot in that discord. It's not weird if you're in there and you don't talk. So uh, I just wanted to spell that. Sometimes I join a discord and I'm like, everybody's looking at me waiting <laughs> for me to say something, but that's not exactly, that's not really how it works. No. So uh, come and uh, creep around on the discord if you want, or, uh, or j- join in the discussions. Um, that's going on. Uh, Apocalypse Junction, we have uh, on Facebook. We are making a new community on there. So uh, check out Apocalypse Junction if you're into Walking Dead, if you're into Tribes of Europa, um, Wasteland Weekend type stuff, uh, Attack on Titan. We got we got groups for all that and more. Um, also, the calendar. The calendar. If you want wildly inaccurate dates... <laughs> Uh, about post-apocalyptic things coming up, come check out our calendar. <laughs> That's on the website in the sidebar on the right side. We also have uh, we have like a full page calendar if you're really into uh, into just finding out what's going on in the next month because it's a little easier to navigate than the yeah. right sidebar. Um, That's true. We're uh, we're accepting crypto don- donations, so if you're into crypto, man, and you are liking what you're hearing. Come to our website. Maybe uh, maybe drop us a coin or two from the list. Yeah, we are on the cutting edge of accepting crypto donations here at Post Apocalyptic Media or postapocalyptic dot com. Yeah, we also accept silver and oh. um, precious metals of any sort that you want to send our way. I think that's still legal. <laughs> <laughs> I would imagine as a donation it would be. <laughs> All right. Um, I think I've gone through most of the announcements that we had. End Zone. If you've played End Zone, um, come let us know what you think about it. End Zone is a post apocalyptic uh, civilization builder kind of a game where um, uh, you build a civilization. So we don't know much about it and we want to know more. So come tell us your impressions of it uh, if you have played it. And that brings me to the end of that segment. So next topic, Stephanie, what what do you got? Um, My topic was actually already discussed because it was going to be that blackout podcast. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> All right. And, of course, our upcoming Fear the Walking Dead. That discussion later in this show. Exciting. All right. But if you need me to think of something real fast, I will do some Googling. Well, I got something in my pocket just in case. But I wanted to, I wanted to find out. Sean, do, you, do we have anything else uh, on your agenda? Uh, well, I wanted to mention a store, uh, an article I wrote on Sunday about mm. um, best crowdfunding campaigns for techie survivalists yes uh, oh, i consider what a great idea i consider myself like a techie survivalist i think it's kind of a a weird well not really weird com- uh, combination and it is kind of a more common combination where you know people are getting into the the, the high tech side of of survival not only that but like camping and stuff like that too uh so i wrote this article it's like the top it's like 12 it's not really the top but it's like 12 Things that right now are going on through crowdfunding, through Kickstarter, through Indiegogo, uh, things like that, that you can back, you know, you can throw some money their way and you can get their, um, you know, like a uh, part of their campaign. You know, it, they, it all varies. It's all different. There's bundles that you can um, get and things like that. But so a lot of the, the things that I wrote about were uh power supplies like power generators solar you know basically it's a battery pack with an, with an inverter and, and it kind of makes it easy to hook up to solar and we were talking about solar earlier because if you were to do it the right way you would buy a few separate pieces and wire them together into your solar array 
and then that's how you get solar power but these things kind of make it easy it's like all in one so you you plug solar panels in the back and then it literally has uh you know like like 110 plugs on the front you can just plug stuff straight into it uh and so and those are being crowdfunded there are like i think i have like seven or eight of them right that just this month i mean these things are all the time and just this month there are about seven or eight of them that are being uh you know crowdfunded fun um yeah and what's amazing is some of them are way beyond their goal. Like, let's say they set a $50,000 goal. Some of them are up to like $500,000. So, wow. I mean, this is really, really popular stuff. And it's amazing uh, to see that much interest in this stuff, you know. Um, but even beyond the, the solar generators, I also had some multi-tools. There's a couple like good camping gear, stuff like that. There's this one, uh, it's like a, a stove It's called the Gen Stove. And you hook propane up to it like you would like a regular Coleman stove or something like that. You just hook a little canister of propane and not only do you get a stove to cook with, but you also get, uh, it'll charge your phone. It'll like charge, you know, devices and stuff. And that's pretty wow. cool, I think. So that is cool. Uh, stuff like that I'm always interested in, you know, where you can you can kind of mix that off grid, um, you know, camping gear and things like that just with kind of our lifestyle of liking, you know, survivalism and things like that. So it's a good, it's a good article. I, I took all day <laughs> writing it. So, uh, so everyone check it out. Yeah. I can find some more things to buy. Yeah. Oh, that's the worst part about writing these things. I'm like, oh, I got to get that one. Got to get that one. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We're picking up a few of those. Um, definitely yeah. getting that, that little camera. It looks like a, uh, like an iPod, iPad charger or something, but it's oh, actually yeah, a, yeah. a really good camera to be in your house. So I'll be able to review that before too long. Speaking of those, um, those panels with the battery, I just want to emphasize to the people at home. First of all, it's not prohibitively, prohibitively expensive. No. Um, you know, it's several hundred dollars. So the, if that's prohibitively expensive to you, then maybe it is, but uh, you know, five or $600 bu- probably can get you a solar panel. That's good enough to charge a big old battery and a big old battery. Nice that can accept those three pro- three pronged plugs that you use all throughout your house. Now yeah, that, I mean, go ahead. Uh, as a general rule, you can expect to pay about a dollar a watt for a, hmm. for a charger and then about a dollar a watt for a solar panel. So you can get a hundred watt solar panel for a hundred bucks. You can get a 500 watt um, solar battery inverter, you know, power station for about 500 bucks. So, you know, 600 bucks, you have a nice little setup there for like a a shack or, you know, shed kind of a thing, you know. Right. And you'll notice there that he said, uh, you know, 100 watt panel and a 600, 500 watt battery. And that's because the 100 watt panel can power the the 500 watt battery all the way up to 100 percent capacity. So uh, you don't have to match those numbers. No. Um, And uh, yeah, there are a lot of 100 watt panels. Uh, I have I have one that I keep in my car at all times, so it's fairly light. It's, you know, certainly less than 20 pounds. I would say probably closer to 15, and um, that's, a lot of, that's a lot of juice that comes through there, and uh, it's, it's very – and another thing I want to say about that is it's not, it's not something that you're going to need to research and understand. Like if I just handed you the equipment in 10 minutes, you'd have it set up properly it, just by trying to put it together. It's that simple. Um, so, uh, so don't be intimidated by that. That is a really useful thing. I have one I keep at my home, one I keep in my car, and that way it's always with me wherever I'm, wherever I'm at. I've got power access to electricity. And what I did was um, Stephanie and I are foodies. We, yes. um, we plan our meals meticul- meticulously and uh, – you can buy for about 120, 150 bucks. You can buy one of those pizza bags that have a heater element inside that plugs into the wall. And uh, those things will generally last you like the pizza place. Usually they just keep them plugged in all day and then they just unplug them to send your pizza to you and, and it holds its heat. But if um, like we have a, a barbecue place that's 45 minutes away that we just really love their barbecue. And so what we did was we plugged that pizza bag into the uh, battery 
and it was able to power the whole time keeping that that barbecue warm for the entire trip back to our ho- home so uh you can you yeah can, it works really well you find a lot of uses for these batteries if you if you own one so definitely give that a, a look and we have one really good one in the um on the list well yeah i mean it ranges there's i think like a, a 300 watt you know like a really ultra portable small one there's one the size of a basketball that uh, i think it's like 500 watt or something but that you know that it's all about you have to think if you want it portable something to take camping throw in your backpack or do you want it to power a building you know they have the the blue eddy ones are uh are, are it's a great brand and they they literally are like house backup uh systems you know in case your, oh, wow. your power goes out they'll back up your whole house and you know once you start getting into like running your refrigerator freezer and air conditioning that's a whole different ball game <laughs> <laughs> yeah then so, you need to get just a full house yeah. type generator so just like running lights and fans and in charging devices is nothing but once you yeah there's a quite a step up to get into air, like air conditioning and stuff like yeah. that yeah um right. we should do like a whole episode on on solar i think that'd be cool yeah 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 i agree and That'd you know fun. another thing that people should be aware of is that like the three-pronged plug uh it, that's not universal so what i mean by that is that you could plug my laptop into a battery and it's going to draw x amount of wattage and usually that's going to be fine but if you have like a space heater that's mm-hmm. considered one of the most uh, extreme amounts of power draw, and it requires yeah. X amount of wattage. And depending upon your battery, you may or may not be able to handle that. So, um, so don't yeah, be fooled and think I have that. I have a three pronged thing that it's just going to work because you have to consider the wattage. What were you saying, Steph? Oh, I was just gonna say I was really surprised when I learned that about space heaters because you know we didn't lose power during that winter outage, but I was concerned and looking it up and what would happen if we did. And, and that was when you told me, no, you can't, you know, <laughs> plug a space heater into that'll drain that battery way too fast. And I, I had no idea that the wattage on space heaters was so high. That was very yeah. surprising. A, a little safety tip about space heaters too is, you know, you hear about fires all the time with them. It's not the space heaters themselves. It's the, when people have an extension cord and that extension cord is not rated for the level of, of power that that, so it'll burn right through that extension cord and burn, you know, the house. So that's always the problem usually. Oh, that's interesting. I didn't yeah. know that. Huh. Yeah. And then there's the whole problem with like the, the propane that people sometimes try to use that then causes carbon monoxide poisoning. <laughs> like, like here in Texas, several people died from trying to find ways to heat their house with propane or in in the house or like i think some person even tried to use like their car somehow to heat their house so yeah just be careful with that kind of stuff (laughs) make sure you check all the carbon monoxide precautions first yeah sadly we lost a few people people burn kerosene indoors right yeah, it's a lot clean. It's a cleaner burning mm. fuel. It still has a smell to it, and it's still, um, you know, highly flammable if it spills or something like that. Uh, well, it's actually not highly flammable. It's not like gasoline. It, it can't explode. There's no vapors. Hmm. It's kind of like diesel hmm. fuel. Diesel fuel burns, but it doesn't. Uh, it's not combustible. Oh, so, interesting. And, and kerosene's the same way. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and I had read before that kerosene does have some negative health effects. It's just not you know going to kill you then but you know yeah. there there are reasons not to use kerosene if you don't have to yeah very interesting by the way Derek you had asked me um about a topic and <laughs> i had mentioned blackout which i was woefully completely unprepared for anyway but um yeah tell us what you found i i just did some googling this is stephanie's googling moment you know i'm just information i found that's interesting but the um constantine film which apparently is behind the resident evil films they have just acquired the rights to a post-apocalyptic novel called the walk this was just announced a few hours ago and they're going to be making a post-apocalyptic film based on that novel so 
that can be fun. The people behind the Resident Evil films making a new post-apocalyptic mo- novel. I mean, movie <laughs> based on a novel. It's um, The novel is about an apocalyptic earthquake and a studio exec who is making his way by foot from downtown L.A. to San Fernando Valley to find his family. And he has to team up with an unusual traveler along the way. So, last minute topic from Googling, but that is kind of exciting, you know? Another yeah. post-apocalyptic film is in the works. So, what did you um, what did you think about the Resident Evil films? Or does this news make you excited? Did you think they were done well? That's a that's a Derek question there. I've <laughs> yes, only seen the first Derek one. Question. Oh, you've only seen the first one. <laughs> I, I know, saw. I know. <laughs> I saw, the, I think, the second Resident Evil first, and I loved it so much, I went back and watched the first Resident Evil, which was even better. Mm-hmm. So I was so excited about the Resident Evil series. Um, there, it, And it's hard for me to comment on the co- movies after that because um, mm. they had a lot of things I like in them, and they didn't – none of them came together like – in a satisfying way to me. So um, it's, it's almost like you have a meal, right? And all the ingredients that they set before you are things, you know, you love, you know, it's got a lot of cheese and a lot of chicken, you know, and it's all there. But when you eat it, you're like, ah, this is just, it's not doing it for me. And that's what I felt like um, a lot of these resident evil movies, they had great action scenes. They had elements of the, of the movie that were superb and fun and I really enjoyed, but on the whole I was left wanting. And so I'm kind of happy they're rebooting it in that way. Like they're giving it another shot and trying to Mm -hmm. go about it. But, um, everyone should see resident evil, the original movie. That's the one that's the best in the whole series. And, um, it's, it withstands multiple rewatches. I think I've probably seen it four times. Wow. That is, yeah, that's, that says a lot. <laughs> yeah. And I'm not into horror. I think horror. I watched it with you, but yeah. Horror is not my forte. And that's what I thought it was uh, mm-hmm. for a long time, but it really, it really walks a line between a traditional post-apoc and horror in a way that is very satisfying. Uh, so we have a, uh, a, a few comments here in the chat oh. for Twitch. Great. Um I hope I'm pronouncing this right. Strontium Doug, you know he's in oh, Discord. Oh yes, yes, he's on our uh, he's on our Discord too. Hey, Strontium. Yeah. He Hi, says uh, there's a really cool comic out at the moment called Geiger Post Nuclear War. Very good, definitely worth checking out. Oh. I've heard of it. Thank right. you for the recommendation. Yeah, a good family friendly. Um, yeah, it's out. Graphical novel. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Cool. Yeah, and yeah, he I also talks about uh, he he has some solar. He, I'm reading that back in the conversation. Yeah. but he has some solar uh, out in his uh, beer garden. Oh, and, nice! Uh, his back garden is covered in lights, and they're all solar. God bless <gasps> solar, he says. <laughs> oh, that sounds nice. Yeah, I really want more solar light setups too. Solar's the way it's, to go, and it really you know, is. That um, that thermal uh device that you were talking about earlier i just i get so nervous about that because i'm like electronics hate heat heat and it can kill Mm -hmm. them so easily so i know that that i've seen other devices trying to do this and apparently they work but you you probably have to be really careful if you're dealing with all that heat there was one a while back that used wood it was a wood burning stove a little camp stove that used wood that would charge electronics too this was maybe eight years ago i remember seeing this Hmm. but apparently it never worked that well like it would it would only do like one or two amps and it would take all day to charge a phone or something like that i mean i guess that's to be expected but i thought that was a cool idea because it's wood you know you're burning little twigs but it was that's the thing is it was tiny so you you would just burn little twigs and stuff and it (laughs) it would just take forever to charge anything so I, i don't think it really caught on but this might be do a little better because gas it has there's a butane version and a propane version and apparently they're much more efficient but then you're paying for propane costs you know it's not really worth doing at home it's only worth it if you're out you know out you know, and about 
Mm-hmm. I came up with an idea just now for a use for these things. And that is if you're one of those parents that don't want your kids to have too much technology, <laughs> you could like give them the device and be like, you can power it using this one method. And so long as you're doing it that way, you know, you can use your iPhone yeah. all the time. Uh, so that would like just be like a natural limit and force them to start fires, I guess, before they touch <laughs> their friends. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, anything else in the chat? No, nope, that's it. Yeah, well, thanks for thanks for stopping by, Strontium Doug. Yeah, thank you. It's good to see you he on is, here. Woohoo! Yeah, he he is a well known member of the Discord community, so yep. um, you can you can always see him in there. Um, uh, let's see. Okay, so it's uh, it's four twenty. And I realize we're live on Twitch on an 18-year-old and over channel, and I think that's important to point out. <laughs> because because um, I'll, I'll just say this. like, it, When it comes to uh, a, a medical kit, I'm putting together this medical kit, uh, and I'm going to do a review on it. But I feel like in some ways my tongue is tied due hmm. to the uh, political climate about like the kinds of things that I could be putting in there conceivably. And um, I'll give an example of something I'm definitely not putting in there, even though it has medical use, Um, cocaine. Mm. Cocaine is not going to be in my bag and that is uh, because it's super duper, duper illegal. Like really, really, really. Yeah. For real, illegal, they'll put you in jail for a long time. Destroy your life. Uh, and that actually does have a medical use. Apparently, you know, I've heard this from actual doctors that, uh, if you have a severe nosebleed, it can kill you. And one thing that they've found works better than anything else at stopping the nosebleed is cocaine. So, um, they apply that to the nose hospitals have it and, uh, and it stops the bleeding. But, um, but anyways, that's not going in the bag. Uh, (laughs) another thing that is not going into the bag um cannabis has a bad rap you know it's uh it's a uh you could call it dangerous uh they but alcohol is also dangerous and you know everybody universally accepts that alcohol is useful in certain situations uh sometimes it's just to sterilize instruments Mm -hmm. put that alcohol in there um Cannabis has uses and, oh, uh, yeah. uh, you know, I probably won't be able to talk about them as openly, but, um, but I, I want people to know that because, uh, for one, I have this platform and, um, and I feel like it's almost a responsibility because there's so much misinformation out there as to cannabis. There's a lot of people, yeah. uh, in my neck of the woods who don't believe it has any uses that are legitimate. Uh, and, um, and those people unfortunately might suffer sometimes because they don't know that a medicine exists that will help them. Yeah. And, um, so those kinds of, uh, top down rules probably go away in a post-apocalyptic scenario and you get access to more medicine options than you might have in our current societal makeup. But, um, all that to say, do your research. Really look into that. If you're one of those people who have heard that there is no legitimate medical use for marijuana, check it out. Just look into it. And um, I feel almost obligatory to point this out, but um, if you, uh, there are, there is research to indicate that if you use marijuana heavily at a young age, it can hurt you permanently. So uh, I'm not saying whether that's you know, completely vetted or not, it's a medical study. And so those, those go by the, the rules of science. Um, but that is a serious concern. So, Mm uh, if you're younger than 18, first of all, get out of my Twitch channel. (laughs) Not allowed. (laughs) And, uh, second of all, don't do drugs. But, um, but if you're older than 18, look into it. Look into it. Uh, maybe you have a 420 friend who will uh, talk to you about it. So um, there, that's the end of Derek Says some, Something Controversial for this <laughs> week. Y'all have anything to add to that? Um, 
I mean, my the only thing I would add is I, you know, you know me, I, I think cannabis should be legalized in, in the U.S., you know, on a federal level. And I know a lot of states have legalized it, but um, because of those medicinal uses, they really should just be legalized. But there you go. That's that's my statement. My one political statement that I make, you know, once every like six months or something. I don't know. There you go. <laughs> yeah, I kind of feel I, this is my my view on everything pretty much <laughs> is if you want to do it, it's not hurting anyone. Go for it. Mm, but if okay. they're going to make it legal nationwide, just let me buy stocks in the companies first. <laughs> That's all I ask. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Cuz man. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we all need to be on that mailing list that the the <laughs> Congress is on that they get to <laughs> buy and sell those stocks with a little bit of warning. <laughs> right. <laughs> uh yeah, no. To- totally agree. Totally agree. I think I think I'm on the same page with you, Sean, on on that for sure. It's um you, live and let see- live. You seem uh, confused by that, that you're on the same page as me. <laughs> I, <laughs> I don't, Sean, you play your card so close to the vest that um, it's almost like a blank slate situation where I can always just imagine that Sean is like on the on the opposite of whatever whatever I'm thinking and uh, <laughs> and have an advers- adversary. I, like, I like watching your face when you're when you say something that you think is going to offend me. <laughs> <laughs> You, you just keep looking at me like, what, is Sean going to blow up here? Is he going to yeah, finally this a bridge see Sean too far? Go crazy. Sean. <laughs> That's so great. <laughs> yeah, well, um, cool, cool. So anyways, uh, we'll, we'll move on to the final topic of the day, which is Fear the Walking Dead. Now, Sean, you are one episode behind, correct? Because there's two episodes in this season. I am... I'm... However many episodes there are, I'm all of those behind. Oh, have you not I've watched only, any of it? I've watched one episode. That's all <gasps> I've watched. I haven't watched the new. And yeah, I think when I told you earlier that I watched one episode, I thought you, maybe you thought I meant like one of the new ones. No. Yeah. No, I'm way, way back there. Oh, Sean says something controversial. Yep. <laughs> oh, dear. So spoiler alert, everybody. Doop, 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 doop. Beep, beep, beep. Spoiler alert. Just giving you that warning because we're going to talk about the episode the most recent one with spoilers also spoiling sean live i'll forget (laughs) so it's okay (laughs) spoiling sean live i love that we need to market that somehow yeah (laughs) t-shirts all that Uh, okay, so so stuff start us out with a little bit of a recap on uh how this episode started out Oh, how it started out. I mean, I'm rem- I'm so stuck on remembering how it ended. Like, And yeah, I, I wrote a review on the episode and everything. And, and I'm like, how did it start? Um, the best part for me was the ending, which I know we don't want to jump to. So let me pull up my handy review article to help me remember. It is on post-apocalyptic media, guys. So um, anybody who wants to read my review of the latest Fear the Walking Dead, just go to our website and you will find it. You can uh, go to the Fear the Walking Dead section or just scroll through. Yeah, this this episode was titled uh, In Which Morgan Loses His Damn Mind. Oh, gosh. Oh, gosh. And uh, he just consistently yeah, he uh, lost his mind this episode. So, uh, you know what? Maybe we should just skip to the end. That's what the people well, want. Well, let's talk about how he lost his mind, though, because that's a little bit before the end. And, you know, you you made, you made kind of helped me think that maybe it was grief over losing John Dory that was clouding him a bit. But basically, now I'm remembering a little more clearly the part before the end, which was the part I loved. So that's why it stuck with me. But there was a scene near the beginning where Virginia basically takes all of Morgan's friends because she's trying to get Morgan to bring her crazy sister that we all hate back to her. And she lines up everybody in a very Negan callback type of scene she has them all in, on their knees in the dark but she's got a gun rather than a bat 
it was obviously supposed to make us think about Negan. And she's got all of his friends there. And she's basically on the radio, Morgan, come back here, or I'm going to start killing people. Bring my sister to me. And honestly, like, my opinion the whole time was Dakota's terrible. He should just turn Dakota over right away to her, because who cares about Dakota anymore? I don't know why he didn't just do that. I, Virginia, you can't really trust her because, like, in the middle in the middle of this scene, she grabs June. June saved her life in a previous episode, chose to spare her. She grabs June and puts her in the lineup as one of the people she's threatening to kill, along with all of June's friends. And it's ridiculous. Like, this is enough to tell me you can't trust Virginia. Don't spare her life because that's how she's going to pay you back for it. You know, just forget it. Well, yeah, it's, Virginia was introduced when the, the very first time we were introduced to Virginia, she completely uh, betrays somebody she had to deal with and kills. Oh, him. that's right. She did. I forgot about that. Yeah. The guy like helped her take the petroleum factory or something. Mm-hmm. And then she just blows his brains out. And she's like, I didn't want to live up to my end of the deal. So there we go with that. That's so, right. No, Virginia... Yeah, it's Virginia, I thought he had Dakota as a bargaining chip with Virginia. I thought he was going to bring Virginia and then kill them both. And mm-hmm. that's that's the play that I would have approved of. Virginia, uh, I definitely see the parallels with Negan. Uh, right, up, right down to the let's keep him in prison idea that Rick yeah, that and get to Morgan like espoused. Uh, um, but... But Virginia is so much more dangerous than Negan when when they have Virginia, because, well, at least in my opinion, Virginia had a lot more potential to rise, rise up uh, once more compared to Negan, who his forces were just utterly decimated Mm -hmm. when he got captured. So, you know, the idea that that Virginia should be killed because of the danger she represents makes a lot more sense. It does, and you're right. Morgan was just she. She got away with a couple of his with Grace, who's pregnant, and then um, Daniel. And she she sends a guy off with them, and uh, Morgan tries to protect her the entire episode because she's the only way he can get to his friends. Which isn't really true because I mean, first of all, don't trust Virginia. We already learned that. So he shouldn't be protecting her. He should just be sending people off to track down the guy who rode off with his people. But he's like betraying people right and left all through the episode just to protect her out of the fear that if she dies, his friends will die. But there's only one person protecting his friends. And I I don't know. I feel like his friends were in greater danger if she lived personally. I mean, it turns out that, you know... She did bring those friends back, but ugh, he just he betrayed so many people trying to help her live, and then even and then didn't want to kill her because he said there was too much killing and it's time to stop killing people. But yeah, like you said, Derek, she posed too much of a threat. She knew the location of his town that he had been trying to keep secret. Because he brought her there in a really stupid move. Yeah, his secret town. He told everybody in the world about. <laughs> he told everybody over the in the world about his. Yeah, he it, did. He told <laughs> everybody about his secret town. <laughs> so okay, so I we'll kind of wrap this up uh, with a little discussion at the very about the very end, and this is the part where you want to watch Sean's face because uh, big <laughs> big spoiler coming in. So June. <laughs> June does what I would have done. That's yeah. ju- I channeled, uh, they channeled the inner Derek of June because June uh, goes in and uh, wants to visit the prisoner and just does what needs to be done and shoots Victoria in her face. Virginia. Virginia. Who's Victoria? Gen- Virginia slash Jenny. Yeah. She shoots and kills. Virginia. 
I'm just saying. It. <laughs> you know what, Sean? Sean's trying like, to forget I don't even that. Know who Virginia is. I'm uh, trying to imagine who Virginia is. So. <laughs> 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 so <my> shocked face <laughs> <laughs> yeah so many of the people that sean saw are just like no longer with us <laughs> back in the first episode so we know we haven't gotten june's backstory for a long long time but when john dory was tracking down june for a long time she was leading a gang and it wasn't like a Rick style, like we try to do good, but sometimes we fail, you know, kind of a, a gang. It was like a uh, we do whatever it takes to survive gang, I guess. We don't get a ton of backstory, but we do know that they weren't very ethical in June's gang, that she ran herself personally. So we kind of um, forget that she is the kind of character who can do something like murder a prisoner. But uh, but at the end of this episode, we are reminded she doesn't give a fuck. She's just going to murder that prisoner. And uh, and, you know, what are you going to do about it, Morgan? You're going to kill me for, you know, killing our enemy. So um, I loved it. Very, yeah, I'm a too. lawyer. So I generally I like due process and I don't <laughs> even, you know. Yeah, that's prisoners. true. And this was not. But <laughs> but in this case, Morgan wasn't allowing due process either. You know, Morgan named himself judge. And he, even though everybody else around him wanted Virginia dead, Morgan decided on his own that that's not what was going to happen. So he wasn't allowing due process either. As far as like, it's not like he was going to have a trial for her or anything. His plan was to hook her up with Dakota and send them off secretly to survive. What with the hell? The knowledge of where their secret town was and with the ability to just gather up a bunch of people, you know, and Virginia is telling him, oh, I promise. I promise not to co oh, ever come back. Does she pinky swear, though? <laughs> yeah, I mean, she's broken her word so many times. And June was that was very much a Carol type of moment for June, you know, at least previous Carol, as far as doing what had to be done to keep people safe even if it meant the unpleasant action of having to kill somebody, you know, she did what had to be done. She took and took that on to herself, which was definitely a thing that Carol has done on the walking dead. So, and then that moment she put on John Dory's hat and walked off. And I loved that scene. Loved it. Yeah, that was a, that was a very satisfying scene. So, uh, that, the the walk off with Morgan, yap yap yapping in in her ear. That was just perfect. I just loved yeah. it. Uh, it felt great. I love Morgan as a character. I love what he's brought to the story, and I loved uh, that she just kind of walked all over him in that moment. So, um, bravo, Fear the Walking Dead. I'm loving uh, what you're doing right now. So keep doing yep. that. Um, cool. Well, we have reached the end of our conversation on Fear of the Walking Dead. Is there anything else in the chat for us to discuss before we wrap it up today? Uh, Doug says he stopped watching when the family were struck on the boat and the young ones started talking uh, a, a lad on the radio. Is it oh. worth going back to? Oh, I remember that, Doug. And I was so freaking mad at Alicia for doing that and putting them all at risk. I know exactly what you're talking about. Yeah. But he asked if it, he boat. should, he yeah, asked he, if he should go back to the yeah. show. Did he ask that? Yeah. Derek, should he go back and watch? Are you willing to go through, uh, you know, a little bit more? Cause there's, <laughs> there's more frustrating things that happen. And, <laughs> um, after that and, uh, yeah, Primarily, I feel like they center around uh, what's her name, the redhead woman, that's the mother. Madison. Ma Madison. Yeah. The primary, primarily, my my criticisms from there on out are Madison focused, and it's not the actress; it's the way that her character is written, and um, she just she just really annoys me. But. Uh, she's like the Rick of that universe of that storyline. And, uh, I don't like Rick either. Um, <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, if you, well, 
if you can get to where Morgan gets introduced, I think that the series gets revitalized there. And um, if you're current on The Walking Dead, you might just could skip to that because then you know Nor- Morgan's backstory mm-hmm. and they introduce John Dory at that same time. That's so uh, you know the two best characters going going through uh, from that point on um, because one of the best characters dies just before that and i'm not gonna comment on that anymore but uh but yeah i would say i would say uh yeah maybe (laughs) yeah maybe (laughs) it's entertaining yeah it's entertaining there are frustrating moments and there and there are also good moments so yeah i'm with Derek. you know i mean you know got some time on your hands (laughs) why not are you bored (laughs) But yeah, this current season, absolutely fantastic. Yeah, it's I, been fun this season. I love it. And what Walking Dead is is similar. I'd say that the the desert experience of Walking Dead kind of falling off and not being great is a little longer with Walking Dead. Yes. But they're both right now hitting on all cylinders. And I wouldn't say that if I didn't believe it. Good answer. All right, anything else? That's it. All right. Well, uh, I want to thank you all for tuning in. Thanks to those who stopped by to chat with us. We enjoy that and we appreciate it. Um, Everybody, check out the Discord. Our website, postapocalypticmedia.com, is a great resource. Uh, Sean and Stephanie, they're writing every week about all sorts of topics we don't we don't just stick to tv and movies and games we're talking about real world apocalypses that might be happening we're Mm -hmm. we're giving you uh you know some survival material and you know just like sean talked about there's some camp gadgets uh you know it's it's a little known fact that uh one of the podcast hosts has a youtube channel called camp gadget reviews and uh Which one is that it's <laughs> it's it's pretty decent you're gonna have to go to youtube and find out which one of us uh is is doing camp gadget reviews but um but that can that can give you a good head start and leg up on on buying the best camp gadgets so um we are going to be back every week uh we our podcast comes out on friday so if you're listening to it on the app fridays is when it's coming out we yep. record on tuesdays and uh, we'll be we'll be back on Twitch on next Tuesday at the same time, which is 5 p.m. Eastern, 4 p.m. Central on Twitch. Come on here. Ask whatever questions you want. No holds barred. Uh, we might not answer it if it's too. Uh, <laughs> I guess no holds barred really uh, doesn't matter if we're unwilling to broach a topic. Yeah. But uh, but anyways, you guys have fun. Stay safe. Happy 420, and always be ready for the big one. Bye, y'all. Bye-bye. Bye.